Hey everybody, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you are watching this, welcome to Hope Teen Summer Sunday School. We're going to be looking at our Habitudes curriculum, and I'm here to give you a quick review before our awesome student leaders are going to be sharing with you the lesson. That's right, guys. We have Mia and Lily Lizer going to be sharing the lesson with us this morning called The Velvet Color Covered Brick. And um, Mia's done a lesson before. Lily, this is her first time. So go ahead and share encouragement. Write a comment below. Um, let them know we're excited for them to lead this morning. Quick review. We have the iceberg. And the iceberg presents your leadership. The 10% above the water is your skill. The 90% below the water is your character. And it's what's below the surface that sinks the ship. The hot air balloon rises as the burner is released, but eventually it begins to fall and needs to be refilled. They must be continually filled in order to go up, and people are like this too. They must be consistently encouraged in order to reach their highest potential as leaders. The personal laptop, our minds work like a computer. They spit out the data that has been put in, so garbage in, garbage out. Leaders are disciplined about what they store in their minds and in their heart. The talking stick reminds us that before we lead, we must listen. Leaders seek to understand the perspectives of others before they communicate their own perspectives. They show empathy and ask good questions, and as a result, they learn, earn the right to be heard. It's all about listening. Thermostat and thermometer. People are either thermostats or thermometers. They will merely reflect the climate around them, or they will set it like a thermostat. Leaders develop values and principles to live by and set the tone for others. Dorothy's Way, in the classic story of The Wizard of Oz, Dorothy illustrates a new kind of leader. She invites her friends on a journey and helps them discover their gifts, encourages them, and walks with them rather than insisting on being upfront. She doesn't have all the answers, but she gets them to their goal. Opportunity Statue is all about leaders managing opportunities. Everyone has 86,400 seconds each and every day to use or abuse. Opportunity is a statue with hair in the front but bald in the back. You can't grab these opportunities once they're gone. Emotional fuel is a lead. leader's future is shaped by the people closest to him or her. A leader's personal network is his or her emotional fuel. Their models, heroes, mentors, inner circle, accountability partners, these are all people that add to emotional fuel for these leaders. And last week we learned about Calcutta Paradox, and we talked about how humility is magnetic in a leader. When we underspeak ourselves with regard to our value, others are drawn towards us and our influence increase. And today we are going to be looking at the velvet covered brick. And what we see in this image as a part of leadership is that leaders should be both tough and strong and direct like the brick, and also soft and compassionate and tender like the the velvet. And so together it makes great uh, leaders and leadership. So go ahead and take it away, Mia and Lily. Hi, I'm Mia. And I'm Lily. And today we're doing the Velvet Covered Brick. So we're going to start off today's lesson with um, telling a story. I'll be telling one about a teacher of mine, and then you'll be telling one about um, the Black Widow. <laughs> um, so in my um, homeschooled co-op, which is kind of like a day school for homeschoolers, um, we have a gym teacher named Miss Melissa, and she, um, we were doing kickball, and um, we were all like hurting our feet because we weren't kicking properly. And so she let us all play one game like that, and then when we all came up and were complaining about how bad our feet hurt, she taught us how to kick properly where we wouldn't hurt ourselves. In this moment, she was like a velvet covered brick because she was a brick because she let us hurt ourselves and let us learn from that. But she was also velvet because she didn't let us continually hurt ourselves. She taught us how to properly kick. That is a good example of a velvet covered brick. And my story is of the Black Widow from Marvel and how she is tough and she's a fighter like a brick. But she's also gentle and kind to Banner, also known as the Hulk, which is when she's being velvet. We need both of this in leadership. We both need a brick and velvet. Tough and tender. Let's further dive into the meaning of a velvet covered brick. So characteristics of a brick. Tough, doing right, is strong, confident, and knows what's right. Characteristics of a velvet. Tender, her, 
humble, being real, being real, gentle, gentle, and serving others. And serving others. It's important that a leader is both tough and tender. It's important that a leader is both tough and tender. So with this, um, turn to the person next to you if you're watching with somebody, or t get a piece of paper and a piece of um, and a pen and write this down. Why is it important for a leader to both be brick and velvet? Please write down your answers or tell the person who's watching with you. When it comes with dealing with people, develop a covered brick approach is develop a covered brick approach is essential. Is essential. It's easy to be one or the other. It's easy to be one or the other. Velvet or brick. Velvet or brick. This results in poor leadership. This is. A, this results. In this, poor in resu this results in poor or weak leadership. Think for a moment about the great leaders you have experienced in your lifetime. The ones who are most gentle, like gentle and like a velvet covered brick. They are both tough and tender. Can you think of anyone in the Bible who is a velvet covered brick? One that comes to my mind is King David. He led Israel over 3,000 years ago. In one hand, David was a poet, a musician, and deeply spiritual. In the other hand, he was a warrior. He was tough, and he also defeated Goliath. He is an awesome example of a velvet covered brick in the Bible. Let's brainstorm as a group, so you and the person sitting next to you, or just yourself and a piece of paper and a pen. Um, where have you seen Jesus be a brick, and ha where have you seen him be velvet, and where have you seen him be both? Um, I have seen him be a brick when he was flipping tables. He he lost his cool for a little bit. He turned into a person. Like he wasn't just he wasn't just himself like he usually was, but he got angry and that's and that's what a brick is. It's hard. They has a hard outer heart. And so he was a brick in that moment when he was flipping tables. Um, and where have you seen him be velvet? When the crippled man's friends lowered him down, down it, the, into the building where Jesus was healing, instead of getting all angry and yelling at him, telling them, ruin my roof, he was kind and told him, and healed him and told him to pick up his mat and go home. And where we've seen him be both is when Peter was walking on the water. Um, he could. He was a brick in that moment because he let Peter fail. He let him fall. But he was also velvet because he caught Peter. He could have just let him drown and let that be his learning experience. But instead, he caught Peter and hauled him out of the water. Jesus is a great example of a velvet-covered brick. Let's read Matthew 16, 13 through 28. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? 
Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. Then he asked them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus replied, you are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my father in heaven has revealed this to you. You do not learn this from any human being. Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church and the powers of hell will not conquer it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, where you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven, and what you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Then he sternly warned his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. In this part, you see Jesus being velvet. Um, he's, he, let, he, he asks a question and waits for them to answer before just jumping ahead and being like, you're wrong, and stuff like that. So he lets them get the question wrong before he gently tells them the truth. From then on, Jesus began to tell his disciples plainly that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and that he would suffer many terrible things at the hands of the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of religious law. He would be killed, and on the third day he would be raised from the dead. But Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him, saying things such as, Heaven forbid, Lord, he said, this will never happen to you. And Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, you are a dangerous trap to me. You see things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. Then Jesus says to his disciples, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? For the Son of Man will come with all of his angels in his glory, of the Father and will judge all people according to their deeds. And I tell you the truth, some standing here right now will not die before they see the Son of Man coming in his glory. In this part, we see him being the brick. He's tough. He just, crying out loud, he tells one of his best friends to get behind him because he's Satan. And he sets, he tells them to pick up their cross and to lay down their life to regain it. There's so much going on in this passage, and there's in how Jesus can switch like that from going from velvet to being a brick really proves how much he is one. Often leaders are either too tough or too tender. Which are you? A brick is strong, confident. I am a brick. I've, I've accepted that fact that I am more brick than velvet. Because I am strong, I am confident, I step up when leaders are needed, and I stand up for others. And there are ways that I am velvet, but not as much as my sister Lily is. I'm more of a velvet because I don't like conflict, I'd rather just step away and just smile. I'd rather just be kind and not get in the middle of things. Um... Remember, we, we ideally want both, but it's okay to recognize that you're more one than the other. Like, I'm more brick than velvet, she's more velvet than brick. Um, psychologists have started to label leadership it with animal names, such as sharks, foxes, turtles, and owls. Sharks are more, I really want to be on my own, I win and you lose, and it's better this way. Foxes, they prefer to compromise. They, everybody wins a little and everyone loses a little. Turtles don't like conflict. They just want to step away, withdraw, and not face it. And owls, let's work this out and find a way where everyone can win. So I want you to think about this for a little bit and turn to the person next to you or write in your journal or on a piece of paper which one you see yourself more as. I personally would say I'm an owl. I like to find a way where everybody can sort of win, unless, of course, it's competition. But um, I, I think I'm more of an owl 
what would you say you're more of? I think I'm more of a fox. You like to compromise, everybody wins a little, everybody loses a little. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree with that. Um, thank you for your honesty. Um, feel free to leave in the comments um, which ones you are if you're okay with doing that. Um, if not, just keep them to yourself. It's fine. There's no judgment here. How do you see yourself on a day-to-day -day basis? Are you... Um, are you velvet brick? Are you more velvet? Are you more brick? Write in your journal and tell the person next to you. What steps can we take to be more like a velvet covered brick? So for this week, I want you guys to think about this. Think about how you are and think about how you can become more of a velvet covered brick. If it's, it's not snapping at your sister like a brick or arguing with your parents, think being more tender and realize that we're all going through this that horrible time right now where we're all locked inside wearing masks. So become more of a velvet covered brick where you can be brick at one point or another but also be tender. So just stay safe and think about this week through this lesson, who you are and what you can do to change it. Thank you for having us.